Hezbollah told Israel several weeks back when the arrogant genocidal entity started to increase its uh, crimes in Lebanon that we will turn Haifa into Kiryat Shmone. Kiryat Shmone is one of the biggest squatting bases establishments in the north that are described as a settlement. And Hezbollah, yeah, they destroyed like 80% of the place. Most of the residents are not there. The army use it, uses it as a base, basically. They use certain houses there. And Hezbollah warned Israel, they told them, we will turn Haifa into Kiryat Shmone. But the problem is Haifa is not Kiryat Shmone. I mean, Haifa is the main hub in the north, the biggest city in the north. The economic gate, because of the Haifa port, factories, important military bases, military industrial complex. And now they're turning it into Kiryat Shmone. Record numbers of missiles today, yesterday and today on Haifa, over 100 of missiles on Haifa. Now, people need to understand something. The levels and types of missiles that are landing on Haifa are not the same type that they're throwing on uh, the areas next to the borders. Well, some of them are big, but you know the majority of them. You're talking about Katyusha missiles next to the Lebanese borders generally. Uh, although they use, of course, bigger missiles that can w have up to a uh, half a ton warhead, some of them, like the Burkan. But Haifa, you're talking about long range. Okay, long range missiles and heavy warheads as well. And how are they able to attack Haifa so much? You know, Israel is sending all of these forces to Lebanon. They declared we want to dismantle Hezbollah before, killing the top figures in Hezbollah. But this organization is still operational. What's happening? You know, some people are preparing for the day after now. They're preparing in Lebanon for the day after Hezbollah. And uh, the era of the greater Israel to begin. But that's not happening. That isn't happening. Do you know what's happening? What's happening is we have a report coming from Channel 12 today in Israel saying that Benjamin Netanyahu is saying that now it's time to end the war in Lebanon and there is nothing that we can achieve at the size of or more than the assassination of Nasrallah, the assassination of Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah. There's nothing bigger that we can accomplish. You have the five divisions on the borders with Lebanon. What happened? You sent five divisions there, tens of thousands, over 60,000 Israeli uh, genocide soldiers there. What are they doing? I'll tell you what they're doing. Hezbollah are sending the genocide soldiers back as rotten bodies chopped to pieces back to the genocide state and they are showering half of israel with missiles that's what's happening and netanyahu and his government they don't know where the missiles are coming from and they know don't know how to face hezbollah they're hardly moving in a few inches in lebanon to take a couple of selfies going back in body bags that's what's happening but we had this statement coming from Benjamin Netanyahu, and we also had the report. Biden's envoy to the Middle East, there is a chance to close an agreement in Lebanon within days. Optimistic talks, again, from Mr. Amos Hochstein, saying that according to him, the Zion Nazi liar, an agreement could be concluded in the coming days, in his estimation. He's putting in the work. Hezbollah is not in a position to continue the war. Oh, of course, they have to sell it out as something, you know. Uh, Yisrael Katz, the new genocide war minister, yesterday said we achieved victory over Hezbollah. We defeated them. And now Hochstein is saying Hezbollah is not in a position to continue the war. No, of course, they're not in a position to continue the war. They're just in a position to send hundreds of missiles on Haifa and Tel Aviv every day. 
but not to continue the war. Again, you know, when you talk about these people, you need a new dictionary. They live in a pseudo reality. It's like they're living on another planet. They're so fixated on twisting things because this is how they establish themselves that they are still trying to twist reality. What do you mean? <clears throat> what do you mean they're unable to continue the war? They are smacking your genocide troops day after day, giving them a whip after a whip. They're putting their faces in the mud. And the genocide entity is now reaching a stage, like Sheikh Naim Qasim, the new Hezbollah Secretary General told them, where they will be begging for a ceasefire. And they can act as if they, um, however they want to act, you know. All of this is a show. But again, according to that report, and after the same channel reported that uh, Netanyahu saying now it's time to end the war because there's nothing bigger to accomplish than the killing of Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah. Mm. When are they saying that? That's the important bit. Of course, you won't see that on mainstream media, but when are they saying that? They're saying that after this. Again, same thing. Hezbollah, the Islamic resistance targets Talnof Air Base, south of Tel Aviv and the enemy sites and gatherings. Do you know what's Talnof? Southern Tel Aviv. Almost 200 kilometers from Lebanon. Hezbollah, as if it's peanuts, going out, launching missiles, destroying a, another genocide base. And they said the Islamic resistance continues to target enemy gatherings and the settlements within the framework of the Battle of the Brave in support of our steadfast Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip and in support of their valiant and honorable resistance and in defense of Lebanon and its people. Dishon settlement, Kfar Yuval settlement, Neve Ziv with a rocket salvo, Zarit again, Khirbet el Manara, rocket salvos, Al Abad, qualitative rocket salvo, Al Manara again, bombarded the Shraga base, the northern part of occupied acre, Tel Nof, south of Tel Aviv, many missiles, and the Iliakim base just south of Haifa in the most intense day on Haifa and it's not like you know they're not backing their uh, attacks firstly look at uh, look at some of these uh, parts of these videos here that's uh, In Hochstein's words, that's Hezbollah not being able to continue to fight. And this is their ballistic missile, Fatih 110, that they launched on Tel Nof. And here you see is the landings there. Central Israel. And that's called the Geno run, a genocide run. You have um, in the Geno state, they're running from the beach to the bunkers after Hezbollah launched the missiles. It appears to be that uh, Hezbollah's missiles are increasing the overall cardiovascular health of the Israelis. They're running more. <laughs> they're running more and they're losing their breath. It's good for your health, Duran. So, again, you know, publishing these videos here, look at that. Uh, that's Hezbollah not being able to continue to fight. Okay. I mean, if that's Hezbollah not being able to continue to fight, then what is Hezbollah capable of fighting? If that's Hezbollah being uh, incompetent, mm, then I'd be interested. This is the south of Haifa attack here too. Look at that direct landings, and Israel is now admitting that some people are actually dying because of the... 
يا مستوطنات كفار بلوم وكفار يوفال ودي again مثال easy between the in the mountains and in the valleys targeting the child murderers day after day and not just missiles uh, UAVs drones and this is the Hermes 450 uh, being taken down by Hezbollah as well forcing them to go to retreat from the Lebanese borders and again not just one several videos you know we'll share some of them with you That's Hezbollah not being able to fight, according to Hochstein. Again, we wonder uh, how things would look like if they are able to fight. <laughs> and they're also, of course, targeting the uh, genocide forces uh, next to the Lebanese borders too. Here they had some of their diggers and Hezbollah sent a drone with a camera uh, targeting some of their diggers there that destroy some of the nearby infrastructure in the villages that they invade in Lebanon. Hmm? Okay, the video decided to freeze this one. <clears throat> anyway, you get the idea. Hezbollah are destroying Israel. They're destroying the genocide forces. And they're increasing their missile launches on Israel. They are actually turning Haifa into a Kiryat Shimone, ghost city, they're calling it. I mean, back in 2006, it was a ghost city. Now it's probably a haunted city. Soon it's going to be if they continue down this path. And that's why <clears throat> the cowards are lying. That's why Netanyahu, you know, oh, you know, now we need to... We need to finish the war because there is no accomplishment bigger than Nasrallah. Well, you killed Nasrallah before. Why don't you take that as the win and end it from then? Because you were greedy and you thought with your delusions that you're going to have some sort of progress against Hezbollah. You got a kick. So you thought, okay, we're going we're gonna to invade now. We're about to invade. Didn't happen. Why? Because they're giving you a beating. Your genocide soldiers are going back in body bags. And you also uh, don't have enough people to fight. And that ju uh, wasn't, it didn't just end, by the way, with um, Lebanon. Today we had attacks in Jabalia too. Hmm? Jabalia. Miracles are happening in this place. I mean, uh, there's no other way to describe it. This place has been hit so bad by uh, Israel, by the Geno state. 
destroying buildings with people inside them, destroying hospitals, destroying infrastructure, targeting refugee shelters, targeting children in school seeking shelter, targeting people when they're fleeing, imposing a campaign of starvation, there's famine, whatever you can imagine. But people are still resisting them. Today we had 10 operations from the Palestinian resistance in Jabalia and in Gaza altogether, but in Jabalia it was intense, in particular from Al-Qassam brigades against the genocide forces. They targeted three Merkava tanks with a Yassin 105, one after the other. And there was a 60-year-old man fighting with them. It reminded me of the late martyr Yahya Sinwar. He was 62, fighting uh, until his last breath. Again, they've been there for over a year. Any, uh, every war crime under the sun. Th th I mean, sinking to the lowest low of uh, humanity. I mean, Satan is ashamed. Satan is like closing his eyes. And they're still getting a beating. And, and by the way, it's, uh, it's mind boggling that there are still some people in the north. They refuse to leave. They were like, we'll die here. Okay. So that's happening in, in Gaza, in Gaza. Not just Lebanon, Gaza too. Although they are facing such a massive campaign of starvation. Which leads us to the next subject. Ansarullah. Ansarullah in Yemen launched a hypersonic missile yesterday and Israel is investigating if it was coordinated with Hezbollah. They're worried now, they're being ultra paranoid. But it didn't just end there. It didn't just end there. And they are also targeting the genocide coalition. In the Red Sea, the American and British forces going to the Red Sea, trying to take down the Yemeni embargo on a genocidal entity, something that these two countries should be doing themselves. They're going there shamelessly trying to target Ansarullah. And they're not successful. They're not successful. And we had this uh, report from Ansarullah. Armed for forces target two battleships and the U.S. aircraft car uh, carrier Abraham, in reference to Abraham Lincoln. Ansarullah targeting destroyers and the U.S. aircraft carrier. The Yemeni Air Forces, uh, Armed Forces announced on Tuesday the implementation of two qualitative military operations, the first targeting the American aircraft carrier Abraham and the second targeting two American destroyers with missiles and drones. The Armed Forces confirmed in a statement that in the context of responding to the American-British aggression against our country and continuing the support for the Palestinian Lebanese people, the missile force and the drone air force and the Yemeni armed forces carried out with the help of God Almighty, two qualitative military operations. The first targeted the American aircraft carry, carrier Abraham located in the, in the Arabian Sea with a number of winged missiles and drones while the American enemy was preparing to carry out hostile operations targeting our country. They said the operation was successful and achieved its goals, thanks to God, according to the report, and that the air attack operation that the American enemy was preparing for against the country was foiled. So according to them, the American and the American forces in the, in the region, they tried to carry out an operation and they targeted them. And they added that they targeted the destroyers as well. The Yemeni armed forces held the American and British enemies responsible for turning the Red Sea region into a zone of a military tension and its repercussions on maritime navigation. The armed forces added that the launching aggression against Yemen within the American-British defense of the Israeli enemy by American warships will only push the Yemeni forces to further use their legitimate right to defend, confront, and strike all hostile threats in the Red Sea and Arabian Seas and any 
other region that the Yemeni weapons can reach. The armed forces reiterated that their operations will not stop unless the aggression on Gaza stops and the aggression on Lebanon stops. And they added as well, the siege is lifted on Gaza. So Yemen is still very keen on helping the Palestinian people and punishing the genocidal entity when the United States and Britain are shamelessly trying to attack Yemen for imposing this legit embargo on a country committing war crimes. The ICJ told you they are committing a genocide. The, mo the top legal body in the world says Israel is committing a genocide. But the some you know people in where the West are struggling. Oh, is this a genocide? I'm not sure, you know. And they're shamelessly going trying to attack Yemen for imposing a legit blockade against a country committing a genocide in accordance to international law. But this is another uh, example of how every single law under the sun is uh, paused when it comes to the genocide entity. But Yemen is not stopping. And again, the, the pathetic coalition of America and Britain in the Red Sea has been a miserable failure wasting money for no reason, spending taxpayers' money shamelessly to support a genocidal entity. How depraved and ugly is that? And Yemen is still standing up against them. And what's the next step? What, go down on, on a ground operation in Yemen? You're not going to do anything. You're going to face worse resistance than what you faced in Afghanistan if they try and go to Yemen. That's the second thing that I want to talk to you about. Then we had an attack uh, on an American base in Syria, the Conoco base. We had very intense attacks in the past couple of days. The Conoco base in Syria attacked. It's not the first time they've attacked it. Uh, the United States uh, withdrew from one base in Syria before. Uh, it appears to be that there's some sort of negotiations going on in the background without sharing too many things. Because Turkey is having these negotiations with Syria, Iran is getting in the picture, Syria is, of, uh, Russia is of course involved, and there's probably some sort of understanding happening. Again, understanding not by just talking, but by force as well, from Syria. And we have more coordination. We have reports that Iran and Syria are coordinating their efforts again against any potential aggression uh, coming in in the region. And the final thing that I wanted to share with you is one of the most dangerous developments uh, that, that I read today. Encounter with the US is inevitable, says the Iranian president. The Iranian president was usually having, you know, well, a moderate tone to an extent. And, you know, we want peace, but the U.S. is supporting Israel. And, and But now it's saying it's inevitable to have an encounter with the United States. Highlighting his administration's push to enhance relations with all countries in the world, Iranian President Masoud Pazashkian said it is inevitable that Iran and the U.S. will have encounters in regional international spheres. In a meeting with a group of former Iranian ministers held in Tehran on Tuesday, Pazashkian said his administration believes in affinity with friends and showing tolerance towards enemies. In order to address the domestic problems that develop the country, we need to, apart from the settlement of the internal affairs, organize the international relations, remove the tensions, and improve the conditions for interaction and communication with regional and world countries, he added. I believe that even in regard to the U.S., whether we like it or not, we will finally have to encounter that country in the regional and international arenas. So we'd better manage the sphere by ourselves, the president added, reaffirming his administration's commitment to the Iranian establishment's major strategies and approaches. 
Pezeshkian noted that his administration seeks to expand relations with all countries in the world, including with European countries. Negotiations with European countries are in progress, but the Zionist regime has tried to cause disruption and complicate the matters in this course with its recent evil acts, the president added. This is new. And look, we had certain statements coming from Pazishkian previously that, you know, the United States supports Israel. But after uh, the United States allowed Israel to use the Iraqi uh, airspace, look, look at the US, you know, they're occupying the world, basically. Iraqi airspace used by the American military force, certain locations there to attack Iran, we have an escalation. But what does that mean? Does that mean we're looking for a direct confrontation? Judging by how much the United States supported Israel, we could be going there at some point, but, but the fact of the matter is the United States still hasn't fought on behalf of Israel. They allowed them, they helped them, they supported them financially, militarily, diplomatically, politically, but they did not fight on their behalf. Because you're talking about a country, when you talk about uh, Israel, you're talking about a country that is struggling to have people fight for it from within, because they're seeing the hypocrisy so blatant in front of their eyes. I have a prime minister using this war, this genocide, for his own political motives, for his own greed, when his son is not serving in the army, when he's a young and military age, reservist age, and can serve. So why should we go and die for this war without any aim to pointlessly just go and die as cannon fodder? Not that Israel, you know, Israel have, has always used its population as cannon fodder. It's a military state. But they're seeing it. So is it going to work with the American? Is it going to work with, the, who is it going to work with? When you're having so much resistance coming from within certain military establishments and many veterans speaking up, primarily in the United States, by the way, like with the case we had of Aaron Bushnell, many people or several resigning, many veterans speaking up as well. Who are they going to go and fight for, for this death cult? Are they going to go and fight for Netanyahu? Are they going to fight for, the, for these depraved people? That is unless the United States eventually will, for uh, one reason or another, decide to actually participate and go and uh, rescue the Geno state. But even that, there is nothing solid enough to support the notion that the United States is just preparing the army to go and fight. You know, we have an, an anti-war sentiment. I mean, uh, Trump is talking about anti-war. Not sure how much he's gonna implement any of it, but let's see. Uh, there is a notion in the United States that, you know, all of our bases across the world are just wasting money that could be spending here inside the U.S. on our people. I mean, hurricane, the hurricanes that happened recently in the U.S. showed how Israel, uh, Israel is favored by the administration more than the American people. $750 per person in comparison to $2,250 or something for one Israeli person by the American state. What is that? It's ridiculous. So it's going to be difficult. And we don't have the days of the coalition anymore. What coalition? They tried to have this genocide coalition in the Red Sea. It ended up with uh, uh, only the poor, poor old US and Britain sending some of their forces to the region. Uh, it's, it was supposed to be a bigger coalition, including, I believe, Italy, Greece, and a couple of other countries too. Uh, but some of them uh, restricted to sending like an officer to observe something. No one wants to go and fight for a genocidal entity. Apart from, of course, the patron, the United States, and, you know, the, the, the country that created the problem, Britain. You know, they started the Balfour Declaration. You know, we'll, we'll help them. We'll help them as much as possible. But again, it's failing. 
and it's not working. It isn't working. And uh, there are talks again, Netanyahu is saying well, we have to end the war because this is the biggest accomplishment. So far, this is the most significant and clearest sign that we've heard, although again, that was reported on him. So I haven't seen him directly say that, but Channel 12 reported him saying that. Gallant, when he resigned, said we there is no military need for our presence. There is no security need for our presence in Gaza. And the presence of the Israel soldiers in Gaza is a massive threat to them. And there are other political motives to them, them staying there, hinting that it's for the sake of the squatting establishment so that they can create properties over the bodies of the butchered children of Gaza for them to enjoy. But there are talks. Is it going to lead somewhere? The pressure that's coming from Hezbollah is very intense. That's uh, one thing that I can say. And that's not something that Israel can tolerate for a very long time. And they don't have an answer. They don't have an answer. These big bombs that they land on civilian buildings or for certain targeted assassinations. But 99% of the time, it's on civilians, this massive show. But uh, against proper infrastructure, things that are actually operational against them, they don't. Because otherwise, why don't they target them from the beginning? So, you can say we're in a junction. It could go both ways. From what we've seen, we're not going to have any solution anytime soon. From the developments and the level of intensity that's happening on the ground now, <clears throat> well, there are many reasons for uh, Netanyahu to stop. And again, if he wants to stop, he can declare victory if he wants. He can say, he will say, I killed Nasrallah, I killed Sinwar, I killed Hani, I killed the top figures, I killed that, I destroyed Gaza, I destroyed Lebanon, and, and, and. The fact of the matter is, the Palestinians will remain there, the Lebanese will remain there, the resistance will remain there, and they will continue. They will continue against Israel up until they completely eliminate the Zionist entity from its core. That's what's going to happen. So Benjamin Netanyahu can come and claim whatever he wants. He can say that we won, but really and truly, they haven't achieved any of their objectives. But if that brings the ceasefire, say that you won. No problem. 